Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Rye and in today's video I'm back again in the tier 10 French battle cruiser Henry IV. As the battle gets underway it's warrior's path it's domination match mode and I am headed to the A cap point. I'm not alone I've got a friendly destroyer up here and there's at least one battleship and another cruiser making their way up here with me. As I enter the ACAP point, I am being detected, and I'm not entirely sure by what. Not sure if it's an enemy destroyer or not. There are two enemy destroyers on the enemy team, and there are two friendly destroyers on my team. So not a very destroyer-heavy game, which is something that hasn't been seen in a while here at high tiers, at least for me. But then I'm able to get close enough to detect what is spotting me, and that's the enemy Ibuki. Now, the Ibuki Tier 9 Japanese cruiser is basically just a slightly better armored version of the Mogami. And as a result, it has a very, very good concealment range for a cruiser. Something like 9 kilometers on that thing. Which means, with its 10 kilometer torpedoes, you can actually, in fact, stealth torpedo people. Shots out at the Montana that's in the back there who did take shots at me. You'll notice though his shots fell well to my stern. That's because I have the speed boosted up and it always throws off the aim of enemy battleships. Did manage to set him on fire and it looks like at least somebody is still burning. Not sure if that Montana is still burning or if it's both the Montana and the Ibuki. Now I try to get armor piercing off of the Ibuki, but you can see here what I mean by the better armor there. All of those shots have bounced, and those are 10 inch shots. And I've had that happen repeatedly with firing at Ibukis and Zhao's with these guns. They are very well armored, in spite of the fact that they tend to eat citadels like nobody's business. Unfortunately for me, I don't quite make the turn, and I beach myself broadside on to that enemy Montana. And you can see here the shots coming in as I was targeted, but again, that speed boost saving my butt because I was able to get reversed very, very quickly and effectively get off the rocks and angled just in the nick of time. And the Ibuki himself is trying to continue putting shots on me. He's using the high explosive. It's a very smart move on his part. The good chance that he could set me on fire, and me being on fire right now would definitely not help me. He's put the fire out on his deck, but managed to set another fire on just before he gets away. Right now, I only have my rear turrets lined up on him because they are 10-inch guns. The turrets are a little bit slow there. That's why I call it a battle cruiser. But I'm getting shots out there. Still in the high explosive loaded here. Forward shots out. And it looks like because he's on fire, he's burning, but he's also trying to repair at the same time. So I'm just going to farm a little bit more damage on him. Connect with him. Leave him on very low health. Rear shots connect and set him on fire. And I actually finished him off, not through the fires, but through those rear shots themselves. As I disappear behind the island here, parting shots off at the Montana in an effort to try and set him on fire once more. No luck there, only one shatter. Little disappointed by that. Looking at the situation though, the teams are equal as far as ships. Both teams have lost a cruiser. My team is currently capping the B cap point and the enemy team is very, very concentrated at sea. And if you look at the map and you look at what's in front of us, you can see that with the exception of that Montana, who's in the backfield here, the entirety of the remainder of the enemy team is at sea. And we're going to see a lot of interesting play here out of that team as they try to push and rally and get into the B cap point to retake the B cap point. Now, because my team had some ships that went to A, you can see there we still have a battleship back there, we still have a cruiser back there, and they're kind of chasing that Montana. Not something that I would recommend. Did get shots off of Montana and did set him on fire. The Henry is particularly good at that. So at these kinds of ranges, I might as well. Now, I was off detectability here as I get shots over that island onto that cluster of ships that was pushing through that center channel and I did connect with the several ships there and as you can see here our gearing who's got himself into a position to torpedo that channel does have torpedoes off there there's a turpitz there's a zal but those two ships are not the only ones coming out there getting shots off there as I got shots back off at the Montana I am detected and I am being targeted but now I've shifted to focus over to that zal 
Managed to set a double fire on the Zhao, and that's going to burn for a little bit. And with any luck, I can get some armor piercing loaded and put some nice fat citadels into the side of him before he gets behind that island. He takes a big hit from somebody there. Not sure. Shots coming in there. I have my engine boost activated, so those shots fell well behind me there, as you can see. And it looks like that's going to be the enemy Minotaur or enemy Neptune as those shots come flying in there. Finish off that Zhao with fire which I was not expecting to, but it looks like he got hit, really left him on low health there, and the fire finished him off. Enemy Tirpitz has pushed into our camp now and is contesting it, but we're way up on points here because we've only lost two ships, and the enemy team has actually lost four. Of course, as I say that, we immediately lose one of our ships. I pop my hydroacoustic because I want to make sure that there's not going to be a surprise destroyer around the corner or that there's not surprise torpedoes. Tried to get torpedoes out on this Tirpitz. The problem is, friendly gearing was in the way. And of course, the gearing is spotted by that Tirpitz's aircraft, and he's just out in the open. So that Tirpitz is really going to lay into him, and that's not a good thing. Secondary's managed to set a fire on the Tirpitz. The gearing's got a fire on that Tirpitz as well. Hopefully, shots can get reloaded. Not enough in time, but I still got the kill on that Tirpitz from the fire that my secondaries set. At this point, I'm now at three kills in this game, and as I'm pushing up here, there's an enemy Hindenburg coming down that channel. But as I push through this smoke screen, that Hindenburg is not the only cruiser that's in this channel. Nope, there's the enemy Henry. And as we know from watching me play the Henry, it's a very, very dangerous ship. And there's a smoke screen up there with shots coming in. That is definitely the enemy Neptune who's up there. Switching back over to the high explosive, looking to get torpedoes onto this enemy Henry, and I've got another problem now. Enemy Iowa pushing up down that channel, plus all of these cruisers. This is not a good situation for me to be in. Managed to set that Henry on fire. You can see torpedoes coming out there from him from both sides. He's going to try desperately to torpedo me, as I'm going to try to torpedo him as well, because I just don't think I can get a kill on him otherwise. He is low health, though. If I switched over to the armor piercing, I could do it. Here's some fancy footwork here, some heavy maneuvering dodge, all of the Henry's torpedoes, and I'm getting my ship turned. I'm going to get torps out onto this Hindenburg there. I short those because I figured he was going to turn in, but I'm definitely not going to survive the Hindenburg's torpedoes as he connects with all of them. But guess what? I got a final shot off at the Iowa, set the Iowa on fire, and connected with all three of my torpedoes on that Hindenburg, finishing him off, earning myself a Kraken Unleashed and a Double Strike at the same time. Knew going into that situation that there was probably no way I was getting out of there alive, so I was going to take some people with me, and that's exactly what I did. But my game isn't quite over yet. Now, the enemy team is down to just four ships. My team is down to five ships, but we have two of the caps. So the enemy is really, really hurting for points. And they've just lost yet another one of their battleships. And they're now down to just three ships. They've got a Neptune, and they've got two battleships. And this Iowa has managed to run himself aground on the sinking hull of his friendly Henry. Broadside on to a Montana. More importantly, you'll notice my damage counter is still going up. Yes, that's right. That... Iowa that I set on fire is still burning, and that fire really did help whittle his health down and actually earn me a confederate after death. But again, this Iowa is still, he's broadside onto a Montana. Now, our Montana doesn't have a lot of health here, but as you can see there, he's in a better position because that Iowa really didn't have much options thanks to the sinking wrecks of all of the cruisers that were around him. With that Iowa gone, there's now just two ships left. There's that Neptune, which is somewhere back behind that island, and there's a Yamato. Now, the Yamato's got himself a bad position to be in. He has a battleship, an Iowa, back behind him. He's got a Zhao back behind him, who's lighting him on fire. But he's also got ships in front of him as well, including two battleships that are pouring the hurt on top of him. So no matter which way this Yamato angles, no matter which way he faces his guns, he's got enemies that are going to be able to shoot at him with impunity. And somewhere, again, is that Neptune that's back over here. And we should be seeing him shortly pop up here. But that Yamato, really low health. He's on fire in four different positions. I don't think he's going to survive, and he doesn't our friendly Iowa takes the kill on that Yamato, and there's the Neptune. Now, that Neptune is a lot of health, and he's going right after our Montana, who only has a quarter health here. But, remember, the Montana, 
He's got 12 of those 16-inch guns, and there's a big hit. Somebody hit him big. I'm not sure if it was the Montana, because as we see there, as that Neptune tried to turn to get torpedoes away, that Montana just unloads on him and finishes him off, ending the game then and there. 137,000 damage done in that game. Devastating strike, Confederate double strike, and Kraken unleashed. It's always wonderful to see that. 13 secondary hits on a cruiser and four torpedoes hitting their target. Only one flooding, though. Kind of kind of disappointed by that result. But 10 fires set, so lots of damage. Top of the team for XP earned at just over 2,000 base XP. And second guy on the team is our Montana with just over 2,000 base XP there. So overall, a very good game, a very quick game at the end of the day. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and the channel, you can do so by becoming a supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.